Hi there, Silvari here. Welcome to the very first video about the analysis of the QNR map by Fazon0119. This map has been created for the Aspire V contest held in 2020. This video series is about creating the best humanly possible score on that map with explanations, so you can also try this on your own. In this part, just a quick note before the video starts, the skin has been changed in the way where the only jet shown is 300, since we would like to maximize the amount of Vs in this part. So whenever you see this icon on your screen, it means that the person playing scored a 300. 150s are invisible. Thank you! This slider is impossible to 300. It nicely explains the mechanics of how sliders work in this game, so let me take a quick stop here. If you are familiar with the basics, please feel free to go to this timestamp. The slider is built from the slider head, slider body and slider tail. To simply put it, if you click on the slider head, drag the slider through the slider body until the slider tail, you get the most amount of points for this one object, which is 300 and the combo increases by 2 for both slider hand and the slider tail. If you don't drag the slider till the end, you get 100 for it and the combo increases only for slider head. However, if you miss to aim the slider head, you'll break the combo and the entire combo accumulated to this point will be lost. Other variants are possible, however for simplicity of the video, I will skip them since they aren't as important as the ones introduced before. As long as there is only one slider at a time, everything works just fine. However, when two or more sliders occur at the same time, the complication starts to happen. If two sliders and at the same exact moment, the player is rewarded with 300 only for the earliest slider, which usually is the first one. Every next slider ending at the same time will reward only in 100 and combo increment by 1. That scenario also appears if the slider starts and ends during the other slider. For that exact reason, since the slider starts and ends when the first slider is still during its journey for the slider body, this makes that slider impossible to 300. The thing which makes this particular pattern really hard is the really awkward timing. The player here in order to get the best result is required to move their cursor from the slider tail of the one which is located in the bottom left corner of the playfield to the upper half of the playfield. These two objects are apart from each other only by 35 milliseconds. From the description of this it might sound like almost impossible, however there is one thing which works in favor of a player, and it's slider leniency. Slider leniency allows for the situation where the player hits the slider inaccurately and still manages to get the highest judge. No matter if the player will hit the slider way too early or way too late, as long as he remains in the timing window, he can get the 300. The timing window highly depends on the custom parameter assigned by the bitmap creator called OD. The higher the parameter is, the tighter the timing window gets. In game the timing window can be checked while hovering over the parameters in the upper left corner in the song select. Slider leniency only works on the primary scoring system for us called score v1. By using that feature we can check that the entire timing window stretches by 110.5 milliseconds on each side. The needed information right now is how far late we can get to not lose our precious combo and score 300 for the slider. Adding to already existing 35 milliseconds, the maximum late we can get adds up to 145.5 milliseconds, which in also terms can be translated to the jump at around 206 bpm. We need to keep in mind that anything slower will result in losing the combo. Even if you're an experienced also player, this isn't by any means easy to do, especially it's really inconsistent. In the entire duration the player needs to react for the next object, aim and click it during that time, making that pattern the first point where you might be stuck at. However, there is a way to check if you hit the pattern correctly. It can be considered as the highest possible accuracy at 59.6% and it's impossible for it to be higher. If you will ever see that the accuracy on the display is higher, then it means that the person is either cheating or tempered somehow with the game files. Part 2 is where the real fun begins.
part two is filled with only two types of patterns. First one can be described as a lot of sliders on the screen at the same time. The second one is the singular slider going around the circle. Each of these are difficult by the different means. Let's discuss them in order. This part starts with one of these patterns, exactly 12 sliders starting from the same point on the playfield, ending in the same spot. These sliders end in three waves. In each of these waves you can squeeze one extra combo if you play them correctly. This pattern requires only good cursor placement. In order for the slider tail to be counted, you must hold the cursor a bit before the slider tail for at least 36 milliseconds, otherwise it won't count. So on the example of the first pattern, if you will hold your cursor over this area, you will get two extra combos without much effort. Those two combos can be considered as safe to gain. The last one is really precise with the same timing as the snap at the first part. However, you will need to consider how the second pattern works to understand how hard it truly is. But we will move to it in a moment. Same for that pattern. It's also doable to get two extra combos here. From this point, unfortunately, you can get only one extra combo, unless new discovery will reveal otherwise. Most of these can be considered as free combo. However, this one is possible, but really hard to get since the timing is the same as the snap in the first part. As you can see, this pattern is mostly about the correct cursor placement. The second type, unfortunately, is way harder. The second type appears right after the first. This pattern is the very definition of easy to learn and hard to master. First difficulty is estimating the way the slider takes. This one is purely based on how long you play the map, and after a few tries, you will get that automatically. The second difficulty is what makes it hard to master. Player needs to get both the slider tail and the circle in the middle. The circle and slider tail are placed in the same time. Considering that the 300 window is only 25.5 milliseconds, usually the player is forced to decide to either get the slider tail to get the higher combo or a circle for better accuracy. However, it's possible for each of these patterns to be assessed. It's hard, but doable for humans. Ah, right, invisible circles. In reality, those are negative length sliders which fail to display and remain invisible. The only thing worth noting here is that if you hit them even 0.1 milliseconds late, you will miss those. You should only go for your intuition. The way the author mapped them makes them almost unnoticeable of that feature. Have them in mind. They will come back. Eventually. But what's the closest play done by humans? To the moment when I started to do the work on that video, GN's hidden play from 11th of November 2020 could be considered as the closest to perfection. It had correctly done snap, excellently followed sliders in the second pattern, and a bunch of 300s on the second pattern. All those together added up made one of the strongest scores on the leaderboard at that time. Despite losing number one spot on the global leaderboard due to hidden flashlight placed by the Shadow of Dark, only two days after GN set his score, and later on Kemzet, sniping the Shadow of Dark by simply improving accuracy. However, during a research for that video, while searching for a more consistent setup to get the extra combo from the first pattern, I accidentally got two extra combos from it. <laughs> This was the very main reason how on 4th of June I improved the closest play by 4 combo and over 2% of accuracy. Um, well, during the recording for this video, GN sniped it back with even better accuracy, so I guess this info is already out of date. You need to keep in mind that this run is not near perfect run. That run doesn't have a snap during the first part and didn't keep the hardest terrain considered as doable. The accuracy can also be improved further by hitting all circles correctly. Maybe it's doable to kick the accuracy over 60%. Or is it? Let's check it out. The first discrepancy is during calculating the max combo. If we exclude all the risky combo gains, then we can consider 133 combo as the max combo. However, including all the risky combo gains, we can squeeze out around 147 max combo. I'll consider both in the final calculations. The discrepancy is almost entirely connected with the combo, so to keep it short, in the safe strategy you can get 39 300s and 79 100s. 
At the risky strategy, however, you can get 53 300s and 75 100s. Safe strategy can generate up to 58.85%, however, risky strategy can generate up to 60.94%. For the definite answer of this video, I will consider the safe strategy as the human assess. Even if anyone would exceed the accuracy, it would probably end up the same way as calling out Mayday map, where Irier mentioned GN achieved 102.23% of human accuracy. 133 max combo and 58.85% accuracy. This is the humanly possible best score without much risky strategies. Seeing this on the leaderboard, you can consider this as one of the perfect runs. However, for the risky strategy, 147 max combo and 60.94% of accuracy. This insane score will be the last improvement on this part ever with insane 103.55% of human accuracy. I hope that someday we'll reach this level. Thank you for watching.